Now, it was a story that shook the entire province. BC's own terrorist plot that never happened. Yeah, in 2013, a married couple struggling with drug addiction suddenly found themselves at the center of a plot to blow up the BC legislature on Canada Day. And what happened next to John Nuttall and Amanda Carodi is the subject of a new CBC podcast series. It is launching September 6th. And we have the host and co-producer of Pressure Cooker, Dan Pierce, with us today. Dan, hello there. Hello, Gloria. What a story. And it's a story that lives on. What is, what is the, the essence of this plot that happened back in 2013? Yeah, well, I remember when I first started reading about this story in the news uh, and the the big uh, bullet points of the story were that uh, a couple had been uh, arrested on Canada Day for planting pressure cooker bombs at the B.C. legislature. The RCMP touted it as a, a big win for terrorism, that this the threat was real, but uh, the public was never in danger and the celebrations were all able to go on. And then everyone was kind of like, phew, good thing they stopped a terrorist attack. Uh, but then as the details started to emerge throughout the trial years later, uh, the official narrative from the RCMP started to fall apart and the picture got a lot, uh, became a lot different. Uh, we started learning more about the couple and their background, their history with addiction and poverty. And uh, we started learning about the lengths that the police went to, to and the, the, the wild ride that they took this couple on to uh, putting them up in hotel rooms and uh, taking them on ferry rides and uh, buying their cigarettes and buying their groceries. And uh, it, we, f we learned that there was a big undercover operation in which an RCMP officer actually played the role of an Al-Qaeda operative offering to fund their jihadi plot. Uh, and then as this thing went along, uh, it became clearer and clearer that this couple were not the serious terrorists that they imagined them to be. And the police started taking more and more active steps to actually carry out this plot when they were showing very little initiative to actually do it themselves. Well, it's one of those cases where truth really is stranger than fiction. No? So you've decided to put this all together in a podcast. What, what's your approach? Well, uh, first of all, it was reaching out to the couple uh, shortly after the Court of Appeal upheld the trial court's decision that uh, the police had entrapped them. So suddenly, they, so once the uh, Court of Appeal upheld that decision, they were free to tell their story. So I got in touch with the couple through their lawyers. We spent about a year just building a relationship, just building that foundation of trust because, you know, I wasn't the first person to come into their lives and say, hey, let me help you, you know? And so we really wanted to just build that strong foundation of trust us and once we had that uh, and the original idea actually was to make a movie I'm a filmmaker and I still have that dream of making a movie uh, and so in research for the screenwriting process we recorded interviews and uh, I've made documentaries for a long time so I made sure to record good sound thinking that you know maybe this audio might have value and we recorded about a, a dozen hours of uh, interviews with the couple getting the story from their perspective and then their lawyers were very helpful in getting us all the defense exhibits from the trial which included, uh, you know, over 100 hours of surveillance footage from the actual undercover operation and wiretaps and police operational reports and internal emails amongst the cops. And once we had that audio, the interviews with the couple and the uh, surveillance footage, uh, my uh, collaborator and friend, Sarah Berman, who's a fantastic journalist, she started coming along on some of the interviews and she suggested this would make a great podcast. So mm -hmm. that was what we brought to the CBC. Well, no kidding. And great journalistic instincts as well. I'll just keep it rolling, record whatever. You never know if you're going to need it yeah. right at the end of the day. So I'm glad you are going to be able to incorporate some of that into the podcast as well. And the story has a fresh twist just in the past week. Absolutely, yeah. We uh, just got the news that uh, the uh, that John and Amanda, John Nadal and Amanda Crody uh, have uh, got a lawyer and they are actually suing uh, the Crown prosecutors, the RCMP investigators and the governments of BC and Canada for uh, their entrapment, for psychological damage, uh, for uh, malicious prosecution uh, and uh, yeah, spiritual coercion, uh, a whole litany of things that they've gone through that have caused them uh, a great deal of harm in their lives. So that's a brand new development that's just come out in the last few days. Well, and so you've had a, a, a chance to spend a lot of time with the couple over the past couple of years. Yes. How, how are they today? You know, they're, it's interesting. They're kind of back 
to where they all, they began in the first place before this all started. Um, you know, uh, they are still struggling with the trauma of what they've been through. Uh, they've told me about, you know, being haunted by nightmares. Uh, they've told, and then still struggling with poverty. Uh, but uh, yeah, they uh, are doing better. The last time I saw them, uh, they were happy. And um, yeah, we were, uh, they definitely had struggles during the pandemic as a lot of us did. Uh, but yeah, they seem to be doing quite a bit better now. Well, uh, you, as you lay it all out, when you're laying out the whole story there. It just, it seems boggling that our, nobody actually stepped in to stop this, this RCMP sting operation. Well, there were voices within the RCMP who actually did dissent from what was going on. There was a legal opinion that was given within the RCMP that uh, basically thought that these people weren't worth it. These people weren't worth the trouble that was being put into this investigation and the cost, uh, that they weren't serious. They're, even from the undercover side of the investigation, uh, the undercover shop was basically saying they were worrying and raising concerns that they were entrapping the couple, that they were exerting undue influence. Um, and those voices from within the RCMP were silenced. They, will sh they were shuffled aside. And the lead investigator uh, really sort of took control of the investigation in an unprecedented move and, uh, you know, basically decided, no, we need to push them harder. And so those voices ultimately won out in the end. Well, and what do you think it is about the staying power of this particular story that, again, unfolded almost 10 years ago? Well, I think that... I mean, just the, the the top line details were so stunning when I first read them at the time. Um, and what struck me as we got deeper and deeper into the details of the story and watching all the tape is that it only gets wilder and wilder. The details are absolutely mind blowing. And, you know, the, the news cycle doesn't really have the time or the space to really be able to uh, elaborate on so many of those details and really play the tape. And with this long form piece, we have that space in that room to really put you in the wow. car with them and ride along and be in the hotel room while they're building the bombs, but also while they're debating, like, should we do this? Is this right? Is this okay with our religion? Are we going to be killed if we back out of this thing? Because they thought they were dealing with Al-Qaeda. Yeah. So just the, the what, there's such a depth of detail to this story that we're able to get into now that really hasn't been heard yet. I cannot wait to hear this podcast, Dan, and uh, look forward to the movie version, which it sounds <laughs> as if you got lots of material for that too. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> All the best to you. Thank you so much.